Hey, I'm Doug. Welcome to Backcountry Pilgrim, a channel all about hiking, camping, and backpacking and the gear that goes with it. If you're into that stuff, I hope you're a subscriber. If not, go ahead and subscribe right now because today I'm starting a new series about getting into backpacking. Anyone who's been with this channel from the beginning knows that in 2019, I began a quest to go hike the Camino de Santiago in Spain. The Camino is a multi-hundred-mile pilgrimage route, and my cousin and I were supposed to go walk it in 2020. Of course, that got shut down thanks to the coronavirus. Even though the Camino got canceled, a lot of really cool stuff came out of it. For one thing, the channel that you're watching now. Backcountry Pilgrim started off as Camino 2020, which is now a playlist below, that detailed my preparations for getting ready for that trip. As I investigated the kind of gear I would need and the kind of shape that I would need to be in to do the Camino, it got me back into backpacking. Now, I've been hiking and camping pretty much my whole life. I got into backpacking when I was in college, but the Camino really lit a fire under me to get back out there. And when I started seeing all of the cool gear that was out, and meeting people and seeing all these cool YouTube videos and everything, I decided I really wanted to pursue it with a lot more focus and energy and Backcountry Pilgrim was born. So now it's a couple years later and I've learned a lot. I've had some amazing experiences. I've hiked to some truly epic places. I've met some truly epic people and I decided that now in winter, when a lot of people are kind of settling down for the year, this would be a great time to start a series on getting into backpacking. Since three season backpacking, that is that leaves winter out, isn't going to start for a few months, I thought this would be a great time to launch this series for anybody that is starting to think about maybe getting into backpacking. My plan is to integrate this video with my other regular gear review and hike videos, but eventually they will all be collected in one playlist below. All right, so let's get into it. First of all, just what is backpacking? Most people know what you're talking about when you say you're going backpacking, hiking, or camping, but there are some overlaps between those activities and they sometimes have kind of fuzzy edged definitions. So I'm going to take a fairly intuitive approach here and say that basically backpacking is kind of a mix of hiking and camping. Camping is basically going outside into the woods and staying out there without many modern conveniences. Although some people consider driving an RV out into a gravel parking lot in the woods is camping, I typically consider it more to be that you are using typical camping gear and the main focus is where you are. That is to say, you're typically going to set up in one place, you're gonna get all of your gear and your whole campsite set up, and the idea is to kind of stay there. And it might be because you just like where you are, you just want to be outside, and you just want to experience a closeness with nature that you don't get inside a tin can or a house. But it could also be kind of a base camp where you leave your stuff while you go do other things like hiking or fishing or something like that. For now, the important thing to note about camping is that the gear you bring can be very big, it can be very heavy because you are probably carrying it with your car. That makes it a lot easier to set up and often a lot more comfortable to stay in for multiple nights outdoors. So a lot of people begin their outdoor experience by camping. Now, when I think of hiking, I don't typically think of anything lasting more than a day. So you're still outside, you're still out in the woods, but you're probably going to begin and end in roughly the same place. Now, of course, you can hike with basically no gear at all, just put on some clothes and walk out the door, but many times you're going to want at least some snacks, some water, and some protective gear just in case. Probably carry the 10 essentials, we'll get to that later. But as your hiking progresses, you're probably going to go farther and farther, stay out longer and longer, and that's gonna mean carrying food, water, maybe some extra clothes in case the weather changes. And in order to do that, you're probably going to carry some kind of backpack so that you're not having to carry all that stuff in your hands. Basically, I'm defining hiking as doing all of that stuff without spending the night outside. Backpacking is basically a combination of camping and hiking because number one, you're going distance, you're covering miles, you're staying out all day hiking, you're carrying a bunch of gear with you like you do when you're hiking, but you're going to be going on an extended hike, one that takes so long that you're actually not going to get back to your base camp or your car or your house on the same day. The reason that it's important to think of backpacking this way is because it has a huge effect on your gear choices. When you're camping, 
your gear choices can really skew toward convenience and comfort because you can bring big, heavy gear and you can bring a lot of it because the only time you actually carry the gear is when you carry it from the car to your campsite and set it up. When you're hiking, you don't usually have a whole lot of gear and so you don't really need to make a lot of big decisions about how much it weighs or how much space it takes up because if you're just carrying the 10 essentials, they will all fit easily in just about any size backpack. However, when it comes to backpacking, you've got to get all of the same kinds of things that you need for camping into a bag that you're going to carry as if you were hiking. And now, things like weight and size become a huge issue. Further, depending on how long you're going to be out, you may have to carry quite a bit more food and water, and that is also going to weigh you down and take up space. And all of these things come together into a system that can really make or break you on the trail, or at least transform something that could have been type 1 fun into type 2 or even type 3 fun. In case you haven't heard those terms before, type 1 fun is just fun. Type 2 fun is something that is not enjoyable while it's happening, but it is kind of fun to talk about later. Type 3 fun is just not fun at all, nor is it fun to remember or talk about later. A lot of backpacking involves type 2 fun. So a lot of this series is going to be focused on gear, because if you're getting into backpacking, there's a good chance that you don't really have proper backpacking type gear already. You might have some good stuff for hiking, you might have some good stuff for camping, but there's a good chance that neither of those are going to work super well if you're going to outfit yourself for a proper backpacking trip. Backpacking gear comes in a few different categories. Number one, you got to figure out what's going to be on you, namely your clothing, your footwear, your rain gear. Next, you're going to have to think about what goes in you, namely food and hydration. And then you've got to think about what you're going to go in, that is your shelter. What are you going to actually stay in overnight? And that includes your tent, it includes your sleeping bag, sleeping pad, all the things that you need to be sheltered overnight. And like I said, it's really the overnight component that turns a hiking trip into a backpacking trip. And of course, all of this stuff has to go in to a pack that is then going to go on you. And what this means is that backpacking gear is kind of a combination of camping gear and hiking gear. However, they can't be the size and weight of camping gear or else you are probably not going to make it very far. The backpacking gear tends to be quite a bit more specialized than hiking or camping gear because it's trying to take the same functionality of big, heavy gear that can be pretty much built any way that is convenient and put it into a very small, lightweight package, and that is not always easy. And this brings us to the 10 essentials and the big three. The 10 essentials have a long, venerated history of being a good summary of things that you really should bring with you anytime you are out in the backcountry. These include navigation tools, sunscreen, medical supplies, insulation, illumination, fire starting, various repair tools, and then food, water, and shelter. Three of them become very important to focus on when it comes to backpacking, and those are known as the big three. The big three are your tent, your sleep system, and your backpack. And what makes these the big three is that they are typically the largest items in your kit, and they are also often the most expensive. Okay, last I just want to talk about what you can do now to get started preparing for your first backpacking trip. First, I would recommend not buying gear. I know that might sound crazy, but as you're going to see as we go through this series, there are a lot of decisions to make when it comes to backpacking gear. And as I will emphasize over and over, backpacking gear is a system. The gear all has to work together. If you just go out buying random stuff because this YouTuber or that guy at REI says to, you're not going to end up with a system that necessarily functions very well as a system. Some packs do not work with certain kinds of gear. Some kinds of gear do not work very well with each other. And the best way to figure that out is not by going out and spending a bunch of money and then just seeing what fails. So what I would recommend you do now is start researching gear start getting an idea of the kind of backpacking you want to do. If you lean more toward the camping side of backpacking, where you're basically using your backpacking trip to get to where you're going and then you want to stay there a while, that's going to be a different kind of gear setup than if you lean more toward the hiking side of backpacking, 
where you're really just trying to cover a lot of distance and you're spending the night in camp just because you have to. All of that is going to affect our gear choices. For example, if you do your research on YouTube, you're going to see a lot of ultralight backpackers out there, and they're going to be focused very much on weight, very much on size and efficiency, and all those things are great, but they come at a cost. And if you're not out trying to kill 20 or 30 miles a day on your backpacking trips, it's not as important to go ultralight as if you're trying to do fastest known times or do some massive through hike. So as part of your research, try to reach out to people around you and see if there are some backpackers in your life that can let you borrow some gear. You can take it out on short hikes. You don't necessarily need to use it overnight. You can try setting up a tent in your backyard. You can try firing up the stove and making a camp meal one night. Try out the gear in a safe place before you get out in the backcountry where you don't really have any choice. And if you can borrow the gear, you don't have to lose any money finding out that you have something that isn't going to work for you. And then as far as physically, I would just get out and start hiking. Start going for walks, find a local park, find a local trail. Just get out there and get your body moving. Increase your time and distance at a reasonable rate and just try to see about where you are. At what point do you start really feeling like you don't want to do this anymore. That's going to give you an idea of what kind of trails you should try out the first time you go backpacking, which by the way, I would recommend to keep short and to keep fun. All right, I hope this has helped you out. If it has, would you mind giving the video a like and tell me in the comments what kind of questions do you have about getting started backpacking. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. Again, I'm Doug. This is Backcountry Pilgrim. If you want to be alerted when these videos come out, make sure you are a subscriber and then click that bell next to the subscribe button and turn on the notifications. Otherwise, YouTube isn't going to tell you when my next videos come out. I look forward to going through the series with you, and until next time, take it easy. Mm -hmm.